Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sunday day, the 18th of September, 2011. The number of sea flares is rising. But before we get to that, our trivia question. Several of you have expressed concern that the current level of activity is particularly peculiar, or indicating something special going on in the sun that we should be worrying about. We've had the largest sunspot number in several years, with a level yesterday of 167, and we've had one of our sunspot regions reach a level of 400 millionths in area. So I thought a good trivia question to put this all into perspective would be, what is the largest sunspot group area ever recorded to date? And what's the highest sunspot number recorded to date? The answer will be given at the end. Frankly, I've given up counting all the small sea blips that we've been having recently because the background level is so high that even a small B flare will now be counted as a C flare. So I've just marked the larger C flares at the moment. And there's been six of them. So we have the same situation as we had yesterday, with lots of active regions producing a high X-ray background, but no major flares. At the moment we have just six numbered active regions on the disk. We lost several over the limb overnight and a couple decayed away. And I have added a small innovation here to the area numbers in parentheses. After them I've put a tick or a cross depending on whether I agree with Noah's numbers that the region is growing or decaying. First let's take a look at region 1289 in the northwest. It's getting very close to the limb now. It's very difficult to see what's going on with the region. Region 1293, according to Noah, has gone altogether, but I can see a couple of spots there. But again, it's very difficult because that's even closer to the limb and will be gone by tomorrow. There is a new region trailing behind region 1289, which is not as yet numbered. It was there yesterday, and I can't see how you can miss something this big. So I'm hoping that by tomorrow, this region will be numbered. Next regions 1295, 96, and 98 are approaching disk center in the north. Between them, these three regions have produced three sea flares. However, looking at the regions individually, region 1295 seems to have grown quite significantly in the last 24 hours, with development in the spots to the north and east of the main spot. Behind it to the east, region 1296 doesn't seem to have changed a great deal in the last 24 hours. However, the trailer spot does seem to have broken up a little bit compared with yesterday. Region 1293, just to the south of region 1295, certainly seems to have grown some significant spot in its uh, leading part of the region. However, the trailer part seems to have decayed significantly. Region 1299, near disk center in the south, has shown some significant sign of growth over the last day. I've already mentioned the new region developing in the northwest. However, there is a region coming over the northeast limb, maybe several regions, that are just beginning to become visible. These are the regions that have been producing these beautiful loops from behind the east limb, so I'm expecting quite a bit of activity from these regions. So solar activity remains uncharacteristically low for such a high sunspot number. And I expect this situation to continue at least until these new regions develop and get onto the disk. We can follow the evolution of each of these regions using the sunspot and magnetic movies from the HMI instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory. My favorite area to watch in these movies is the region around 1295, uh, the large spot in the uh, northeast as it goes towards Sun Center, and also the emergence of the new region in the northwest. In the transition region, the interesting area here is the region in the southwest, which has just gone over the limb. It suddenly starts producing a whole series of jets. You'll see it more clearly in the magnified movie that I show here. Also of interest might be that we have several long filaments crisscrossing across the disk and if one of these should start to lift off then we're likely to get another earthbound coronal mass ejection. In the coronal movie take a look at how all these regions seem to be interacting with one another. There's loops going from one region to another and even more clearly on the x-ray image from the SXI instrument on GOES there is a set of loops crossing the equator in the disk center. In the coronagraph movies from the Lasco instrument on Soho, we can see there's a beautiful coronal mass ejection off of the west limb. There's also a smaller one earlier off the east limb. And there seems to be no comets crashing into the sun today. From the ACE data, it looks as though we've been hit by another coronal mass ejection. You can see at the top of the plot in red, the BZ component, which is the uh, vertical component of the, the solar wind's magnetic field, switches from south to north and back again. And that again is a sign of a, a coronal mass ejection passing in front of us. The solar wind has reached a peak 
velocity of about 550 kilometers per second, but it's been steadily decaying away ever since, and the density and temperature has been relatively low. Here's a short animation of what happened to the Earth's magnetic field when that coronal mass ejection hit. On the left is the magnetic field, and on the right is the pressure of the solar wind on the magnetosphere. With all this geomagnetic activity, the high energy electron flux seems to be very depressed, and we've had no proton events. The aurora zone seems unexpectedly quiet, yet we've had the KP index reach minor storm levels. There have been some beautiful auroral pictures taken, which I'll show in the background of the summaries in the forecast. However, if you want to see more detail of them, go to spaceweather.com. They have a lovely gallery of them there. So in summary then, the X-ray background is at the B9 level. The sunspot number is at 138. The radio sun intensity has risen to 145 solar flux units. The solar wind speed has dropped to 420 kilometers per second with a density of about 4 protons per cubic centimeter. And in the last 24 hours we've had some storm conditions in geospace. So my forecast for the next 24 hours is that C flares and M flares are still likely. An X flare is possible. The sunspot number will remain high. Coronal mass ejections are likely. Solar wind speed will drop lower. And further geomagnetic storms are unlikely. From the composite coronal image we can see that not all of the region has yet come over the northeast limb. So we'll get better details of that tomorrow. The answer to our trivia question is that the largest sunspot group uh, area ever recorded is 7,000 millionths. That's 20 times larger than the large one that we've just seen. So that was quite an impressive region. And the sunspot number that month reached 311. So the things we've seen recently are relatively tiny compared with the uh, sun at, when it's at its full level of activity. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.